MSB2 is another really strong German uh, Grandmaster Blue Bomb Matthias, Matthias Blue Bomb. So, you're the senior in here without giving away your age? I'm sure you're not that old. Oh my god, the 0.8 seconds though, buddy. Buddy, you gotta move! I mean, yeah, you're lost anyway, so. Happens. Blue Bomb also really, really strong. Um. Mm, 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 Okay, give me one second. We're now on chess.com Twitch as well, so I just want to say hi to everybody there. I'm going to move the chat. Well, I'm going to just have both chats. Blue, blue bomb. Am I pronouncing it wrong? Yeah, Nico. I know, right? Imagine being able to write letters that are not just purely in English. Okay, this should be a draw. You just keep your knight in this like little square thing. It's a really nice end game technique. Because if you if if the king ever goes, yeah, well you'll see. Technically, there's no such thing as English letters too. All right, so if you guys want to move over to twitch.tv slash chess, I'll be reading the chat from there. So make sure you guys are going over there. Yeah, sorry, Latin script, to be very exact, <laughs> is what I am talking about. Okay, let's see how Dretch is doing. Who was this again? This is Sam Sevian, right? I keep forgetting who these people are. I gotta start remembering. Oh my god, wait, 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 wait what? He didn't play mating one. Not that it really matters, but... I mean, it's Sam Sevian. Well, I, well, maybe it's not Sam Sevian. Maybe, maybe I'm just lying. Oh, that's not. That's Conrad. No, I'm. I'm pretty sure I knew who this guy was at some point. Okay, I'm just guessing at this point. People who don't have their actual names on, what a scam! Stop scamming. I need to be able to tell. Sorry. I accidentally tapped out of the tournament. Ah! Ah! Give me one second. There we go. Overlay's back. Um, okay. So, we currently have Hikaru at 7 out of 7. And obviously, he's going to be playing against... Um... Oh, no. Oh, no. Andre Dimitri and Draken. I keep forgetting. I'm sorry to Mr. Dimitri. He's currently these are the only two seven out of seveners. So this is gonna be a match for glory and pride. And whoever gets to probably win this week's edition of Title Tuesday. There's a lot of people there's two people with six and a half out of seven, a lot of people with six out of seven, but once there's like such a big gap, it becomes a really big gap. So there will be a six minute break after this round and we will see how it goes. Clash of the Titans, exactly. And Hikaru really just keeps playing this pawn structure that I don't understand. Like you can do it against 2600s, 2700s, but against somebody who is like also a fellow 3000er, not really sure. If that's like gonna work out too well for him, but we'll find out. I mean, he knows better than me. Let's see how Hess is doing. Hess is now at five out of seven, which is really good, actually. That's actually really good. And Levy is also at four and a half. Not bad, not bad. Eric is at four. Um, that reminds me. I did have this one mission where I want to end Title Tuesday with 6 out of 11. Because I think I got in 6 out of 11. Maybe it was 6 and a half out of 11 or something. I wanted to just push my lemons in Title Tuesday. I'll do that one of these these weeks. When I don't have too much stuff going on. Well. Those are our uh, streamers. Alright, see you, Victor. What opening was this? Is this another London? It looks like another London. I like Eric's position here. Let's see how Levy's doing. Ooh, very aggressive chest from Levy.
Oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you, chat. You guys are people love as well. Appreciate the support. Uh, this looks tempting. But there's queen takes, I guess. And then if this, then there's just so much going on. So you can't really play knight c6 even though it's a fork. But I mean, I don't think this is going to help much. I feel like a lot of things are going to just hang here like that. Thank you, Petruk, for the prime. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, let's see how Hess is doing. He's actually currently playing black, so... White seems like he has a lot of space. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well... Not too comfortable for him. As you can tell by his time, he's also down 50 seconds. This game is already in an end game. What happened here? I mean, white's just so winning. He has up three pawns. Okay, let's see how Ikara is doing now. And Levy has already lost his game. Unfortunate. It happens. Also, Twitch chat, if you guys have anybody you want to watch as we're going to the final rounds of this week's Title Tuesday, make sure you're letting me know in the in your chat comments so I can drop in on some people. If I deem I like them enough, I will drop in on them. Okay. Um. Rook to c8. Rook d1. Probably go... Can we see Andrew Tang? Of course. He's currently playing against Timo Feyev. And he actually just lost, unfortunately. He looks like he got a very interesting game. And then... Um blundered it a little bit he really didn't see queen f7 wow I, i'm a little bit surprised but 34 seconds on the clock i would imagine i mean it happens it obviously happens so it's also blitz <laughs> but unfortunate hikaru is playing meltwater he's also playing in this week's edition of title tuesday because he is hikaru and hikaru does hikaru things and he is very good at chess Mm -hmm. Blitz is too slow. His brain doesn't turn on. Can we see Damiano? I can't find his game. That's the issue. I don't know how far down I have to scroll. I'm sorry, that was uncalled for. That was very uncalled for. Um... Where this this is still a very important game for the overall count outcome of this week's title Tuesday. I do prefer White's position just because it looks like Hikaru's king is getting absolutely busted, but the engine doesn't think it's that bad. I guess after H takes G, well Queen takes E five is the idea I had, but I still think H takes G five was maybe a little bit better. So. Hmm. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry, chat. I have no filters today. Oh, wow. Um, that's a little bit worrying. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say, he's going to play take with the rug, and your king is actually just out in the open. I mean, this is a very tactical position with 18 seconds on the clock and 7 seconds on the clock for uh, Dimitri. But Hikaru is Hikaru, so... He's not scared about his king at all. This man has no fear. Only today am I like this. You're right. Ice, you're right. Um, oh my god, Hikaru! With the checkmate! Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> well, I guess that's something that happens. Wow! Okay. Okay. Well, that's something that just happened. I mean, that was pretty incredible, for sure. But uh, also very Hikaru-like. 
He knows he's better in those tactical positions, so he goes for them. I don't know, Anorak. I have no idea. You're asking the wrong person. I can barely drink water and play chess at the same time. That escalated very quickly. I agree. Uh, so, I mean, the idea here is you just... No, you put the queen there. You go to king e2. And then... You, what? What are you doing? Yo, you put your king here. So then you give a check at some point. And then you put your king here. And then you can use your queen for shit. Okay, or not. I guess the pawn. Yeah, this might just be a draw. There we go! We did it! We did it! That was the idea I had. Except, I think if Black actually played the game properly, it wouldn't have worked. Oh wait, I'm cheering against Robert? Wait, I take that back. I shouldn't have said that idea. Please. I'm sorry, Robert. I mean, it's not an idea that's supposed to work if, my, if the opponent actually plays well, but the opponent doesn't always play well. Um, okay, Sanan is winning very, very easily. Rook nine with pawn. Just don't lose the pawn. Who is this German Grandmaster? I am not familiar with his user. Dennis Wagner. Oh, I just accidentally tapped out of the tournament. All right. Well, I am definitely really good. Sorry, my bad. Ah! Ah! Oh, okay. So that was actually all the games um, for round eight. And there will be a six minute break starting now. So we'll be back after six minutes for the last four games where we'll probably see some tight contention for first place prizes. All right, I'll see you guys in six minutes.
Alright, and welcome back guys to this week's title Tuesday, where Hikaru is currently leading with 8 out of 8, and in second place we have Giga, who I believe hasn't actually played against Hikaru yet, so I'm betting that that will be the game that we will be watching um, in a little bit over here, but yeah, so there's going to be that, and there's a few people over here also with 7 out of 8, but with 3, sorry, rather four more games to go as we do have kickoff oh maybe they've already played we have alexander playing against hikaru right now um also a very strong grandmaster obviously but he does have seven out of eight so hikaru is pretty much safe i would say in terms of like point wise i'm not really sure where where did giga's game go huh there's no game there Okay, interesting, interesting. I'm not sure what happened there, so I don't I don't see Giga actually. I'm sorry the board was a little bit cut off. Should be alright now. Um so I mean if he can't really just draws, he's still in firm lead because I don't see Giga on here anymore, which is really interesting. But maybe he had to go or something. Let's take a look at how Ming is doing. Huge shout out to Grandmaster Ming Lei on Twitch. Who is Giga? That's actually his name. I think it's like <laughs> He's playing Wesley Meltwater for Naka. Okay, that was actually kind of a funny comment. But, <clears throat> hello, Chess Sniper. How's it going? We do have Knight takes F7 here as a possibility. I think, because Knight takes D5 is... Oh my god, so much tactics. I don't know what's going on. Knight takes F7 would be really interesting because you bait the king out, then you play Knight takes D5, Knight takes D5, and then you maybe go Bishop to C4, or you go Queen to h5 and take i mean i don't know it's probably just pushing for too much stuff I, don't, I have no idea what's going on um tactics is too hard okay let's go back to seeing hikaru's game i think for once he didn't play his favorite like g3 b3 setup but instead went for a scandinavian which and then he still played b3 regardless which still happens and he's also probably playing another game at the same time Probably. Probably. Um. Okay, so rookie three. He changed his surname to Chad. Yeah, this is true. I think he's gonna go for like a rook left. Yes, rook knight to d2, rook to h3 is the rook left as I had in mind. Or rook g3. Both work. I mean, the idea is basically, like, black has no pieces on his king side to protect his king. So guess what? We remaneuver all of our pieces to the king side in order to attack our opponent's king. Chess can sometimes be really simple. Um. Alright, let's take a look. Andrew is currently playing against Alexander Fear. This looks like a very good position for... For Andrew. Okay. Okay, knight to d1. F3. It's gonna be bishop to d7. A force, probably. You want a castle at some point. Maybe. Hopefully. I don't think black has moved his king yet, so that's still on the line here. But it's looking like a very stressful position for black. I would not want to be the one playing black here. Andrew's position is just so easy to play. Uh, very easy ideas. Okay, off to queen to g6. This king will never be able to castle again. Alright, let's take a look at how Hikaru is playing. With four games to go, including this one, there's really just not that much... variability for who could win first. So I'm already put placing my bets on Hikaru. As well as Giga and Alexander. Yup. The typical few. The usual, the usual. All right, Rick to C one. Probably gonna play Knight takes C four. Threatening Knight takes C four rather. Has to move the Queen. He's spending a lot of time on this position, which I'm not a fan of. Hikaru is winning as always. Yep. 
I know, right? What a surprise! I wonder how chess tournaments would go if you just put all these grandmasters into like more Swiss pools like this. It'd be kind of cool. Where is Giga? I don't see him. Oh, did he just sit out of a game? I'm so confused. He's at seven and a half out of nine. I have no idea what happened there. Okay, well, in that case, I mean, whoever is winning from the group of people with seven and eight is probably going to be, um, for example, between Team of Fave and Tigra. Um, they're going to be contending, well, trying to challenge Hikaru rather for the first place prize, but Hikaru is already a full point ahead of everybody else. I mean, even if he draws, which is very unlikely to happen in this game. Just looking already like Hikaru's tournament. Three rounds ahead of time. Which is pretty insane. That's how good he is. Mm. Okay, let's see how Genghis is doing against Dimitri. Unfortunate. He is down a whole rook, basically. Dimitri is just down a whole rook. That's not going to go well for him. Alright, what about Ming? Uh, Ming just seems like he is slightly better. Materials equal. Uh, White's rook can either be really dangerous or really misplaced. <laughs> One or the other. You're aiming at this, but... Oh, and, and like I said, Hikaru is okay with the drop because he is just up half a point now. So, yeah, that's totally fair. He doesn't need to risk a position where he's not really better. But that is the first point that will be going. Well, not first point, but the first non-win Hikaru will have. Take it by Alexander. Now there's... Alexander with 8 out of 9, 3 people with 7.5 out of 9, so now we just have to kind of see. Um, <laughs> that's hilarious, Nordman. That's an interesting take on the situation. Oh, oh, this endgame doesn't look like it's going in Tigro's favor. I mean, bishop pawns are pretty strong, but not if you just lose all of them. We'll move the rook, threaten the bishop. If this, then the king probably just goes here. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. This can get spicy. Unfortunately, it won't be enough. And then you can probably use the king to hold. But actually, this is white's win now. Well, I don't know if it's winning. It's just interesting. Because this king has to always prevent this. And this rook probably has to always prevent this. But... Genghis Khan is in uh in second. Ooh. I'll find out what his username is. I mean what his actual name is on the next round. He's probably next in line to play to challenge the king Hikaru. Alright. Okay, and Andrea just won against Alexander. PA, as predicted. Oh, the, the the seconds are ticking down. This is very much still a draw. Um. Well, yeah, it should be still a draw. Rook end games are typically a draw, even if you're up a pawn. Tigra actually just won. In a game, I said that he was probably lost. So respect to him. Oh shoot! Sorry, I clicked the wrong one. Yeah, that's true, Killbuzz. I'm the only king. This is a draw. Alright, let's see how Zigalko. Oh, they just drew as well. This is going to be a win for Black. Frederico Perez Ponza. Got it. Peppo G. Thank you. Not a perfect title Tuesday. Yeah, indeed. It happens. You can't always be perfect. Can't play two tournaments and win both at the same time. However, that does mean going into round 10 of 11, he is going to be playing against Fred Federico Perez Ponza. Yeah. Let's see how this one goes. We can also see how Sanan is doing against Tigra. Currently, in terms of rankings, we have... Hikaru in first with 8.5 out of 9. Genghis, oh sorry, Federico with 8 out of 9. Tigra with 8 out of 9 as well. 
Oh my god, the 20 seconds time diff. <laughs> Coming in hot from Tigra. Hikaru gives 8 seconds back to think about his second move. Sorry, this is actually not Hikaru's game. Sonan. I'm just looking at the wrong game. My apologies. I was looking at the rankings at the same time. Um, but the time difference is pretty funny to me. When they just probably not not around to start the game. Um, but this is a very solid opening. Was this possibly a Queen's Gambit declined? Oh, it was a London. Yuck. It's a London with a Bishop F5 line, which is actually one I like, but it's very drawish. The more you play symmetrical pawn structures, the more drawish the position the games get. In case you guys weren't aware, that's how chess kind of works. If you play totally symmetrical, well, guess what? A lot of draws happen. So I don't know if Hikaru's okay with drawing this or if he's just, um, you know, just something he wants to do. So. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Hikaru's offered a draw. That's what I was thinking too. I actually thought it would be a draw. Alright, so now there are going to be... Hikaru is still in the lead with 9 out of 10, but Tigra, if Tigra wins his game, he will also be at 9 out of 10. So now it just really... really it's really dependent on whether or not Black can win this game. <laughs> Which currently he does not seem to, be, seem to be doing a very good job of. So Hikaru is playing smart, very smart chess over here. Theoretical... well, smart draws. Is the better term for it. Tiebreaker is raiding. Is it actually? Oh, I see. Which is why he's finding these draws. Oh, that makes sense then. That makes a lot of sense. I actually had no idea. His tiebreaker is way ahead. I see. Or is Blitz versus Wesley starting? Imagine if his opponent was just like, no, I will not draw you. That would kind of suck. Okay, so bishop b7, queen b8. Hi. There's queen takes g2 being threatened. Oh, there's no way why we'll miss this checkmate in one, right? Good. I, I, I'm the kind of person that would, so that's why I said that. Um, Alright, this game is so slow. I don't know why Sanan has used up a whole two minutes straight off the opening. It's move 13. This is like a very slow game, surprisingly. Black is just going to start expanding on the king's side. I think he knows he has to win in order to catch up to Ikaru, and he doesn't really care about anything else. He just wants to have a shot at winning this week's title Tuesday. All right. All right, all right, all right. Queen e2, there's going to be potentially h5. Not sure. I mean, do you just start shoving your pawns up the board? Do you long castle? What well, if you long castle this bishop takes a7? So that doesn't sound like a very good idea. You can maybe play a6 and then do that. I Okay, queen g6 is a very weird move. I have no idea what queen g6 is for. I feel like it just gives white a free move to do whatever he wants, which is probably going to be c5 in this case. So. All right, let's go back to Alexander versus Oparin. Knight e2. Hello? This looks so bad. I mean, this king is almost checkmated. No, but I mean, white's just up material. I didn't notice that. White's up a whole exchange. Okay, what's going on here? C5. Play C5. Black's king's still in the middle of the board. You want to open up the position. Or not. Or don't do it. That's fair, too. I mean, now I think you can just castle. That, that was my main worry. It's like, if you play C5, you can put your queen here, and then you can stop your opponent from castling. But I don't think black even wants to castle. I am extremely uncertain about what why white has 20 seconds on the clock. That can't be healthy. His opponent has a whole minute. It's move 21. 
Sorry, I'll stop flaming grandmasters. My brain is boiling a little bit too. I do, Jim Miles. I do. I do say castle. I say schedule. I say a lot of really weird things. Okay, well, this is gonna go towards a draw. Hikari's gonna be happy because he'll be like in the sole lead going to the last round. Axe and Oscars. Oh, Megalol. Um, White has a pretty good structure. I mean, I, I'm always scared about doing stuff like that because you're still getting back rank checkmated. Like if your knight goes here, there's always bishop to c4 and stuff. So I'm like very scared to do stuff like this. That's why. I am uncertain. These grandmasters are playing chess in, a, in ways I don't understand today. Oh no, Giga lost! I think there goes all his shots at first place in this week's How Tuesday. Well, Blue Bomb is certainly getting crushed positionally. This is one of those French winners that goes wrong. Like, you can instantly know what opening was from the pawn structure. It's like if you go into a French structure and, like, you go into an endgame, it's probably better for black, so... That's why you don't really- Oh, it was an Indian game! What the heck? Oh, it looks a lot like a winnower. The winnower, for reference, is... E6, sorry, E4, E6. And it's just one of these lines. And you oftentimes get the double pawns. So very similar structure to what happened in this game. Oh no! Who is Tiger? Tigra, you mean? Oh, Tigra actually won! That means he's equally ranked as Hikaru. I wonder if they play next game. Let me take a look. His name is Boris Savchenko. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Unlucky for Blue Bomb. Oh, wow. Sarah is a very strong international master from Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan has some amazing female players. They have Abdumalik Zansaya. They have, um, I think this is, oh, this is Bibisara Asabayeva. She actually knocked out, Bibisara actually knocked out um, Zansaya in the Women's World Cup, I think, this year, which was really crazy as well. Blue Bomb won? Nice. Pepe sus. Do you guys play bets on chess games? This is another draw, unless somebody blunders. Rook and bishop should never be winning. But yeah, okay, there we go. We got the draw. This is also a draw because the bishop is the wrong color. End games are fascinating. This is also a draw, two rooks. <laughs> But I don't know, I don't think, it's not going to be a Tile Tuesday unless they play for 50 moves, right guys? There we go, 50 move rule with the draw. Coming in. Alright, and we're entering the last round of this week's Tile Tuesday with Hikaru in first place on Crazy Tiebreakers. And he is going to play against Degra, so all he needs to do is get a draw and he will be in first. And um, there's a lot of people who can catch up with 8.5 out of 10, but based on tiebreakers, Hikaru has pretty much already comfortably won as long as he doesn't lose this game. But of course, it is Blitz. Anything can happen. Maybe not too accurate to say that about Hikaru because... Oh! oh! 
Is that the draw? Uh, oh, and Tigra has actually declined the draw. Tigra has declined the draw against Hikaru. Well, this is a this is a changing things. Huh. We have a new storyline, boys. <laughs> For the last round of Title Tuesday, after a day filled with draws and not only Meltwater, but also partly in Title Tuesday, we are actually going to get a draw decliner in the last round of this Title Tuesday. That is pretty crazy. They should really do tiebreakers as a... Yeah, the draw is bad for Tigra. I absolutely agree because... He has to compete with so many other people for the second and third place prizes. And I don't know if his tiebreaker is anywhere up there, but... So... Yeah. He's not guaranteed second at all, unfortunately, if he draws. Yeah. Why would he take a draw? Makes no sense for him. Yeah, that's fair. Having the... Having had the opportunity to say you true Hikaru is pretty nice. So, draw is better than a loss. Well, I mean, you don't know you're going to lose. You don't know that. Nobody goes into a game with Hikaru and thinking you'll lose. You always think that you have a p potential to win. At least that's how I approach it. But I might just be crazy, so. <clears throat> it's the competitive mindset. <laughs> you would know you'll lose against Hikaru. <laughs> Yeah, well, don't go into a tournament game thinking that, because otherwise you're just going to lose, for sure. You can't think like that. You got to think you can win. You got to think you have an opportunity to win. Even if they're really, 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 really fucking good. You just can't think like that. Chad, don't think like that. Have a winning mindset. Have a Chad mindset. Exactly. 700 Blizz, there's no way. Okay, maybe not for you. <laughs> You would try against Geary? I like that attitude, Pulte. I like that. There is always a chance, exactly. Maybe he is just very tired. Who knows? Uh, Chad set. Okay. I wanted to see actually what's going on in this game. This attack is very interesting. I'm kind of scared to look at this game. Change that mindset into a grind set. Exactly. Aw, thanks, Rakesh. Appreciate it. Appreciate you as well. I've been hearing this Sigma set a lot recently. I have no idea what it means. What is happening? Uh, the knight's just hanging, but black doesn't care? I mean, what was wrong with... I guess, if you took here, the bishop takes this. Okay. Okay. I think he missed knight takes c4. Which would have been better. Because if you go by knight takes d3, there's queen takes d3 which defends this knight. But if you go knight takes c4, it doesn't defend. But I mean... There's no way this is bad, so... Is that what it is, Hazzy? Isn't sigma even lower than beta? Why would you call yourself Sigma? That makes no sense. Like, are we not going by the alphabet? <laughs> I'm extremely confused right now. Yeah, that would be a sick punish. I mean, there's still anything, and it's still anybody's game. It's not game over. White is up a whole piece. The king is just a little bit unsafe. Sigma is not on the hierarchy? 
Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I don't understand what is going on. Like, this could literally be anybody's game. Hikaru is up an entire piece, and Black has to find some serious compensation in order to justify that. We're talking about Sigma. Happens. Chat, who wants to get, give Skipperoni their number? Yeah, we're talking about chess. Sigma is not a meme? I think it is, but with anything in meme culture, it gets kind of serious at some point. No, it's okay. Some random person just give him a... Give him a number. Rook to e3 is absolutely necessary here. I mean, I guess you're, objectively speaking, probably not going to lose this endgame, even if you exchange the rooks off. Well, sorry, no, if you exchange one of the rooks off, but... <laughs> <laughs> nice tunda. <laughs> All right, rook to f3, then rook to c3. Incoming. Or rook to d3. This is looking pretty good. Or rook to e3. Oh, I see tunda. Okay, um, Naka is not in good shape. I agree. This is gonna be a loss now. Oh, wow. Hikaru is gonna lose this. Yeah, I'm trying to look at the final ranking to see what what that would change. Tigra would end up with 10 out of 10 and win. And Tigra is our winner of this week's Halo Tuesday. After declining a draw on like move four. Oh my god, what a change in events. That is actually insane. I mean, Tigra just knew the mission and he fulfilled the mission. He accomplished it way above and beyond. That is pretty insane. I mean, he actually channeled his inner tig uh, Tigram of Trojan. I mean, also, we should probably at this point find out what his... Boris Savchenko. Sorry, Boris Savchenko. Yeah. He kind of had a better position for a while, too. I mean, he just looked like he was better, but... That will be, actually, the end of this week's Title Tuesday. I mean, all the results are in. 10 out of 11 will be first place for Tigra. Hikaru actually ends out of the top three with 9 out of 11. Uh, we have Genghis and... Um, RD4, who is a Kazakhstani. Rustam Kuznudinov? Might be mispronouncing that a little bit. But he is going to be in third. So this Hello Tuesday has been interesting. Uh, interesting in a lot of different ways because there's also another tournament running. But we don't need to talk about that. So, you know, pretty crazy stuff. We had some very strong players. Also some not so strong players, but... The strong players for this time, the winners are going to be Tigra. I keep forgetting what his name is. Federico and Rustam, which is going to be pretty cool. Hikaru out of the top three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're just going to see this game end in a draw because it's opposite color bishops and you can't possibly win this. I'm getting some pretty weird. Mm. Pick up lines in the chat. They're really gonna play this all the way out? They call a flag, it's a plus one second. I mean, they might just decide to draw at some point. That's actually almost a funny one, Skipperoni. That's almost a funny one. Uh, are they gonna, are they okay? Are they? What's going on, buddy? Hello? He went outside and got a drink of water. I mean, they just have to hit 50 moves. I think he's probably just gonna give up. I mean, this is just such a draw. Somebody could offer the draw button, press the draw button too, but that's okay. We don't need that. Who needs that? I mean, if you just move your bishop between here and here, what's gonna happen? 
Oh god. Ah! This is fine. Just a calm commentary be like this sometimes. Um, okay, so these guys are obviously gonna draw whenever they feel like it. <laughs> whenever they will feel like it, it will be a draw. <laughs> okay. Can they not? Is it has it not by fifty moves? There we go. All right, so Tigra is in first with ten out of eleven, and in second we have Federico with nine and a half out of eleven, and in third we have um, Rustam Kuznodinov from Kazakhstan with nine and a half out of eleven. So that was a really exci exciting final match between Tigra and Hikaru, and Tigra eventually did knock out Hikaru uh, from the top three. So. A title to say that does not go to Hikaru. It's a rarity, but huge congratulations to all the participants for today. And also thank you guys for coming and vibing today. Um, I'm going to sign off and I'll be streaming later at like 5 p.m. ET for all of my viewers. And if you haven't watched me before and you can promise to behave and not like do corny pickup lines, uh, you're welcome to join me on my channel later at 5 ET. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'll see you guys later. Alright, take care chat. Have a great day. Bye! Stay around for the raid.